All right, morning everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. What's today's topic? We're going to do another wood turning. Try something experimental. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to start off, I'll use a gouge and I'll make this a nice round cylinder and I'll put tenons on both ends and then I'll come back with you and we'll figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've turned it into a cylinder except for right here and I might make some of this kind of decorative and so we'll make another vessel. I'll use this as the lid. I put a tenon up on top and bottom. I just use a handsaw and actually Okay, after the handsaw, got it in two pieces. This will be the top, this is the bottom. I'll mount the bottom first and work on it, the body of it. So make sure I've got it seated real well up against here. And I do, and I got the dovetail. These are jumbo jaws. So we're gonna tighten it up. Tail stock's in place, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start cutting this like a vessel and uh, what I'm going to use is I'll probably use a gouge to start off with then I'll come over to a scraper so I'll be back with you uh, when I get down to the scraper part but right now it's about two-thirds one-third about one-third of this I'll shape for a top the other two-thirds I'll bring down kind of like a vessel let's see what we got I'll be back with you in a sec now I'm gonna push in here I used a carbide tool instead and I'm going to kind of make the bottom here, begin to. Okay, it's been shaped, and I drilled the hole down, and then I used that index tool I showed you, and I hogged it out. I'll try to spin the camera around so you can get a picture, or I can get a picture of the inside of it for you. Hang on just a sec. I always leave enough room here so that I can form the bottom the way that I want it. So. Okay, let me spin this around. Let me see if I can show you the inside of that. I don't know if there's enough light, but we'll try. That gives you an idea. So that's what I did with the indexing tool all the way to the bottom. Now I'll use my hollowing rig and smooth it all out and get it to the thickness that I want. I'll clean up the very bottom with my carbide cutter, but these are giving you just a few different views of the hollowing that I did with just the index tool. It's able to get out the bulk of it. Okay, I bring my tool rest in. I bring it up just a little bit. I want the cutter to be cutting just above center. And I've done it enough times where I know where that is. And then with the cutter here, this is a teardrop cutter now. And I got the point of the teardrop because I'm going to start finishing the rough turning. Uh, it just goes faster with the index tool, but now I'm going to come back with this and get it pretty close to the wall thickness that I want. Then with the round one, like I showed you in the previous video, I'll clean it up and make it like smooth, almost like you know you went in there with sandpaper. Um, this right here, I got it pointing a little bit this way because I'm going to do this section right here first. Then I do this section, this section, I work my way down. Um, and then I'll show you because I go back and do super light cuts with the round one and I just clean it up But that's at the end. So right now, let's turn this on Yeah, it's about a little bit more than an eighth of an inch so that'll work pretty good because when I put it in here, it's pointing this way. I'll do from here, from about right here, up. Then I'll change this to 90 degree and then I change it going this way and I'll show you that in a little bit. So right now, let's get after this. Okay, so now I have that round cutter on there and I have it pointing back this way because I've roughed it out now all the way to the bottom. So now I'm going to work on this portion right here. Then I'll change it to the 90 degree and I'll work on this to about here. Then I'll move it more forward like this and I'll show you that. 
and that's where I create this sweep right here and I make everything smooth like sandpaper so I go ahead I squirt mineral spirits in here at first like I said it makes on this really really dry wood that I have it makes the cutting so much easier let it soak in for a second there's the laser now see it's pretty thin right here I already where the laser disappears you know you're at that thickness so I have a little bit of extra room to play with so I take super light cuts right here now you start to see the light and it's beginning to drift off the wood which means I'm at that thickness so super light see the light showing right here Okay, now that's all I want to do. Now I'm going to change that. Blow it out. Okay, now I'm going to change this cutter to more of a 90 degree. Not like that. Yep, that looks pretty good. Set my laser light. I keep it a little bit thicker than I really want it, so it gives me that additional playing around room and I've already coated it like I said with the mineral spirits so let's pick up on it here we go now I don't wait for the light that laser light to drop off because I know that I've got that extra room so I reach in here and I feel in this to about right here all the way up has got a nice even wall thickness and it's very very smooth because of that round high speed cutter so I'm going to continue to work my way down and like I said I don't have to wait for the light to drop all the way off I know a lot of people do that I don't need to though I threw in a little bit more mineral spirits but for right now a lot of this has to do with feel also You'll see the light, it's a wonderful guide, but you'll be able to tell where the little humps are on the inside just by feeling it and just taking your time and going over them and just kind of scraping them and pretty soon with the round cutter you'll get it absolutely smooth and you can reach in there and feel and it feels like you sanded it. So that's the reason why I really like these high speed round cutters. All right. All right, now before I change the angle on the cutter, I'm going to blow it out. <laughs> move this out of the way, move this, yeah it's even all the way down, I can feel it, it feels great, not that anybody's going to stick their fingers in there or whatever, but I mean I like to make sure the wall thickness is consistent, so with the laser it does that, so now I'm going to change the cutter, I'm going to move it just forward now, almost not quite I'll move the laser up All right there it's going to show me at the angle now I can do right here that's that final that should be about it we'll reach in there blow it out reach in there feel it and I can't feel all the way to the bottom so I'll use my light and I'll take a look yep it's good all the way now let's talk about sanding and I'll shut the video off for a few minutes I got it the way that I want so I'm gonna sand this now and I'm gonna sand it to I'm gonna have to start off at 80 because some of this especially right up in here a lot of fuzz and garbage on there and there's there is some tear out so I'll go 80 either 100 or 120 I'll go to 220, I'll go to 320, and I won't go to 400 quite yet, but I'll come back to you after I've done all the way up to 320, and I'm going to cut in right here. Now that this is done, I don't have to worry about so much force being placed on the wood, and I did keep a lot of this for bulk, but it's like saying, okay, well, as far as it goes, where I take a look, and yeah, that won't look bad. So I will take it off right around here.
So you see I came in here with my parting tool and I did make it concave. Because I'll put some kind of a decoration down here probably. But I took it all the way down to, eh, that's probably about an inch right there that's still holding this on. And that's good enough for right now. Now, I will mark, I put number three here on one of my chuck jaws. So I always mark these because if I take them off, I can easily realign this pretty darn close to where it was. So always mark it. That way I know where to put it back on there. Okay, so I'm going to do the sanding and I'll be back with you here in a bit. Now the other thing that I like doing, I like to put a little bevel right here. I don't like to have it just sharp and square. So, the tool of your choice, I just reach in. And I've still got this and it's going to sit, like I said, it'll sit on the edge, but it's got a little bit of that concave, so we'll do the decoration. Okay, so I'll be back with you in a bit when I finish the sanding. Okay, I'm back. So what I did do is I sanded this up to 400. So I used these right here. They're in the links below. I use these hook and loop discs up to 220, either 150 or 220, depending on what I'm doing. Then I hand sand from there. So 320, I hand sanded, you blow it off in between, I sand with the grain, I blow it off, I went to 400, blew it off, sanded with the grain, and this is kind of where we are. Now, I marked the jaws, here's number three, this is my third jaw on this, I marked the area where the jaw grips the wood, because I'm going to remove this now, and we're going to make the lid for it, or... They call them a finial. I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to have a little bit of fun, kind of experimenting. But right now, this is the way this has turned out. Now, there's a couple of other things that I do. Now, the bottom of this, uh, when I measured it, it comes in right about here. It's about, because I did the concave part, I kept using a measuring stick in here, the one that I showed you, uh, that I made with a 2 by 2 and I kept doing this, and so I know that I'm right here. There's probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less, between that and where the bottom of this will be finished. Now, somebody said, well, what about the pith and the wood? Well, here's what I do. Let me show you. Now, not all CA glue is the same. This is made by Stickfast. And you can also use Starbond. But I turn around, this is the thin, and I look down in there and I see where the pith is. And I put CA glue all over it. And I let it dry. Now, because I told you that this was kind of thin down towards the bottom, about a quarter of an inch, when I park this off and I sand that bottom, I'll put CA glue there too where the pith is. So between those two layers, as the thin sinks in, it solidifies rock hard. And I've had really good luck doing this. I haven't had anything split at that pith since I've been doing that. Okay, now the other thing that I'll do here, now that I'm done with this for the most part, is I turn around and I'll put in some linseed oil. Let me show you. I thinned it out. I got my hobby bottle, like I showed you. I get them off Amazon. They're very cheap. I turn around and I just pour some of this in here. And then I swirl it around. Pick it up. And if you don't have enough, you can put some more in. All right. I put it back on the lathe for a moment. I don't cinch this because all I'm doing right now is I'm just finishing the boiled linseed oil right around the lip of this. So I get a rag. Now when I take this out of the chuck jaws, I just let it sit. I let it dry out. I let it do whatever it's going to do. And then I'll put it back on here and then I'll worry about the kind of finish I'm going to put on here. now. I know on here I am going to put an oil finish, so I put linseed oil in here and I'm going to put a coat of it now on the outside. 
I mounted now this top blank. Um, make a lid for it. So what, what I'll I'm do gonna... is I'll take, I'll come in a little bit and I'll go down and I'll make this wide and I'll make it to the same diameter as the mouth of the vessel that I just showed you that we turned. At that point then I'll start shaping up here and you'll see this has got a pith in it right here so it could crack real easily and probably will but we'll put some CA glue on that and control that. Uh, the rest of it looks okay. All right, so let's do that real quick. My calipers right here. Like I said, you can get them on Harbor Freight. You can get them off Amazon. Sometimes it's cheaper on Amazon. Sometimes it's not. But uh, anyway. All right, I got to remove all this material down to where this right here, this diameter of the calipers fits over this. So I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, so here's the shape I did the lid. Now here's the lip of the lid that'll go in the diameter of the vessel I turn. We'll part that off in a few minutes. CA glue right here and I sanded it back. That was because that's a little pith right there and it's starting to crack. So that should can control it. And then I went ahead and I drilled a hole all the way through here about a little bit more than one and a quarter um, I think it might even be one and a half. Anyway, with a Forestner bit, I drilled it all the way back here. Then with the indexing tool, I hogged it out. And then when I was done doing that, I used a small bullnose scraper and I cleaned out the inside real well. It made it like a funnel, right? So when I put this on there, it can be like a piggy bank. My son said, hey, That'd be kind of a cool idea and he'll throw his change right in through here, drops down, goes into that vessel until he fills it up. So that was kind of a clever idea. I thought, why not? Let's try it. So let's finish this out. Let's see how it works. So my container of boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits, like I said, little hobby bottles. give that oh I don't know maybe 15 20 minutes I'll let it suck in as much as it can then I'm gonna part it off we'll see what it looks like but I will put two coats of the boiled linseed oil mineral spirits mix on here and I'll let it dry over a period of days and then with this project I'll put two coats of that Zinzer seal coat on I'll denub it between coats if I have to then I'm going to use wipe on poly. Um, the, all the links are below on what I need. And I usually shoot for four to six coats, somewhere in there, till it builds up the sheen that I want it to see. And then I leave it alone. Now, you also could lightly steel wool it and put some paste wax or some kind of wax on there. But a lot of times it looks like this. And it's got like a little bit of a nice gloss to it. So, okay, I'll be back with you in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, time's gone by and it's not dry and I did keep it wet for that 15-20 minutes and then I took a dry cloth and I wiped it down real good. So now I'm going to go ahead and part it off and then I'm going to put that second coat on there and I'll wait 30-45 minutes. I'll wipe it off real good and then I'm going to let it set. So anyway, here we go. Let me pan back so I can get in there and part it off. As a precaution, I'm going to bring the tail stock up. All right, that came off pretty clean. I'm going to go over to my drill press and I have one of those hook and loop sanding discs. I'm going to touch this up lightly and then I'll put a swipe of that boiled linseed oil on there and then I'll show you what it looks like. Be with you in a sec. Okay, so there it is, the completed project. I think it turned out good. Um, Forestner bit, I did have a small drill bit. I drilled through it at first, lined up the Forestner bit. It's going to want to move on you a little bit, depending on how you're drilling. So start off real slow. And I think I was around four or 500 RPMs because I drilled it 
on the lathe, you know, by putting it in the tailstock, the chuck, moving it forward, and then going ahead and boring the hole through. Incre I've got really good sharp Forstner bits. It made an incredibly clean cut. I used 220 on the inside, I mean, just to lightly sand it, and it turned out great. Parted it off, put it on, and um, this is a lot of fun. I mean, it makes an interesting little piggy bank. I mean, if you got tools like this, you want to have some fun, do something different. I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out. I was just kind of like taking it a step at a time, thinking my way through, I mean, how to bore the hole, how to mount it, you know, this, that, the other. But, you know, this is all in having fun out here. Things happen, we'll have fun. I got more coming up, more finishing techniques and tips. Okay, so what's next? Both pieces have one coat of boiled linseed oil. I'm going to let it sit there for several hours, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a second coat on there. And then just before I go to bed or about an hour after applying it, I'm going to come out, I'm going to wipe it down real good. Then I'm going to let it sit for three or four days, maybe five. I'm not in a rush. I got plenty of projects. I'll come back to it. I'll denib it if I have to. And then I'm going to put two coats of that Zinsser seal coat on there. Might denib in between if I need to, but then I'll start using the wipe on poly that I use and I'll put on anywhere from four to six coats. It just depends, but with this particular wood mesquite, I found that somewhere between four and six, it seems to give it a really nice shine, and that's what I'm gonna go with on this one. Anyway, fun little thing, piggy bank. I hope you folks click subscribe. I hope you keep following me. Let me know if you like the videos. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.